Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. Good morning and welcome to our morning worship. Good morning and welcome to the Sunday service. I'm the Vicar Tom of Christchurch Emmanuel and a very warm welcome to all of you, whether you're regulars with us or perhaps this is one of your first times online with us. It's really good to have you with us here. Delighted to say we're starting to make plans to reopen. We've got various teams to get ready for that to happen. And as I said last week, we want to start when we feel ready and confident to do so. So we're in no hurry to start immediately, but obviously we're working towards that as soon as we can. The latest information you will be able to find on our website page, What We Are Doing. Also, I'd just like to say, um, I know both Chris, my wife and I have been aware of so many stories of people who've been helped by each other, whether it's in a practical way or for many, whether they've just been called up by someone within our church family. I think we would want to say thank you so much for all you're doing to care for each other. Maybe this coming week, there's a couple of people you might like to call to encourage them and see how they're doing. Hi, everybody. I've got a notice for you this morning. As you probably know, if you've known me all over the last four years, that it isn't a surprise that this is uh, always set to be my final year on placement here at Christchurch. And so um, after Holiday Club uh, this month, that will be the final thing that I, I, I do here as part of the team. That's a bit sad. Um, it was always going to be a bit sad, probably a little bit more sad because of lockdown. Uh, but I really want to share some exciting news with you um, about what I'm doing next, as I know that some of you have been asking and I know that um, you've been praying for me and I really, really appreciate that. So um, to let, I want to let you know that I have been appointed uh, youth minister, uh, subject to the usual checks, at uh, St Mary's Church in Stoke Bishop. Um, I met the team recently at a social distance and they're all really lovely. And I'm really excited to take the things that I've learned here at, through, and through Swim and Moorlands to, to, to the people there and to, yeah, and to teach them more about Jesus and to do what God is calling me to next. Um, yeah, I know that perhaps uh, an announcement um, on a video feels a bit impersonal. Um, so if you have any questions uh, or you'd just like to chat, do drop me a message and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, I just really want to say to everybody listening, um, thank you. Um, Thank you for the things that you've taught me. Thank you for the kindness and the care that you've showed me. And um, I ask you to keep praying for me uh, in the time of this move, but also pray for uh, the team here doing the youth and children's work at Christchurch. Just that, yeah, as things are uncertain right now, um, especially in the face of COVID, um, that God will keep guiding them and keep leading them. Thank you. This was a bit of very up-to-date minute news on Hayley. And of course, we're really delighted for her. Uh, this job in Stoke Bishop seems to be fantastic. And as Hayley was saying, with a really supportive team. As Hayley says, do please be praying for her during this rather strange time as she says goodbye here, as she prepares for Holiday Club, as she begins the transition to Stoke Bishop in Bristol. And also, if you'd like to give towards a leaving present for Hayley, There'll be information about all the different ways you can do that. Have a look under the Church Live section of our website and there'll be some information there soon. Hello everybody and welcome again to our July ATS service. I'm Hayley and I currently oversee the youth work here at Christchurch Western Supermare. I'm really aware that although we haven't been able to meet together in person for a good few months now, that there has been a sense of connectedness through the daily prayers and through the Sunday services, which is personally for me been really fantastic. To go alongside our service today, we have our family pack, and this is a document available for anybody in our church family 
or anybody who might be visiting to have a look at with uh, songs and crafts and reflections uh, to think about the things that are said in the service this morning. It's available in the notes underneath this video on the Christchurch website. For our service today, we are going to be thinking about our friends theme, uh, for, which has been part of our ATS services for a little while now. And the title of the service today is Friends Do Whatever It Takes. And Angeline will be coming and talking to us later all about that. I'd like us to take a minute now just to still ourselves before God, to turn our thoughts to him and to perhaps switch off any distractions that we can. And as I say about feeling connected and together, let's pray this prayer together. Jesus Christ, we do not come alone to worship you. We come together as your people, wherever we are, accepting your love for us and your call to us. We come in friendship both with you and those we meet with. Together, we are your people. Amen. And so I encourage us as God's people to sing together. No love is greater.
to encourage us now to stop and think about the week that we've just had. Think about the things that have happened. Think about the things that perhaps haven't been so good. Perhaps it could be things that we've said, that we've done or not done, or the things that we've thought that we shouldn't have. Let's join together now uh, to confess, to say these things to God and to say sorry and asking him to forgive us and help us. Please respond uh, when I say, Father, forgive us. Respond with, save us and help us. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Now, may the God of love bring us back to himself forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. To think more about uh, the theme of our service today, uh, we have a question for you to think about and the question we're going to ask you to think about in a second is what's the best thing that you've ever done for a friend? Now, um, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video while you think about this in a second. If you're on your own, perhaps you want to text or ring somebody who might be watching this service. If you're with other people, chat about it. You can write it down. You can draw pictures. You can do whatever you feel comfortable doing. But take a couple of minutes now, pause the video and think, what's the best thing you've ever done for a friend? get on with that I was thinking about that question quite a lot and I I can't think of maybe the best best thing I've ever done for a friend at uh, university this last year uh, me and a couple of other friends threw our friend Kat a 30th birthday party as a surprise uh, and that was good fun um, but I'm really finding it hard to think about something else so I hope you've fared better than me uh, we're going to sing our second song now. Uh, this song has a couple of actions that perhaps you might know if either you've been to Holiday Club or you've just sang it with us in church. So do join in with us all now to sing God's Love is Really, Really Big.
So now we're going to have our Bible reading from Joel and Angelina is going to bring us our talk today. The Bible reading this week is taken from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 14 and it's from the International Children's Bible. Whenever we hear the word love or any of its variations, I would invite everybody to do this action. And whenever we hear the word joy, I would invite everybody to do a thumbs up and a smiley face. I loved you as the Father loved me. Now remain in my love. I have obeyed my Father's commands and I remain in his love. In the same way, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have. I want your joy to be the fullest joy. This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, good morning. My name's Angeline and I'm one of the lay readers at Christchurch and Emmanuel. Uh, I don't know about you, but one of the things I've struggled with the most over these last few months is not being able to see my friends. Uh, I've had uh, phone calls and Zoom chats with friends, but it's not the same, is it? I've not been able to see them actually with me. And whilst we still can't hug, we are now able to see our friends. It was my birthday uh, this past week and several friends throughout the week have dropped in uh, to see me, called around and we've sat and we've had chats in the garden and it's been great. It's been so lovely because I've missed my friends. For me, this time of not being able to meet up with friends like I usually can has reminded me how precious and special friendship is. I've got really good friends in our church family who have definitely helped me over the last few months and I hope that I've helped and supported them. But it's also put me back in touch with friends I don't see very often, having regular Zoom chats with them and even in touch with people I haven't heard from for years. Friends are important, but what does it mean to be friends with someone? In the Bible passage Joel read from a moment ago, Jesus tells us what it means to be his friend and what it means to be friends with each other. Uh, Jesus was talking with his uh, disciples, the people he spent most time with, uh, who probably would say that they knew him the best. And he says this, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Now, if we went around saying that to our friends, we would sound a little bit bossy. I really wouldn't recommend it. But we need to remember who said this. Jesus, the Son of God. So before we go any further, we need to stop and say, wow, isn't this amazing? Jesus, the Son of God, says that we can be his friends. Imagine the most famous, kindest, loveliest, greatest, talented person that you can think of saying they want to be your friend. This is more than a thousand times better. Jesus says that you can be his friend. 
But what about this doing what he commands business? Well, if we remember who he is, then this is not an unreasonable request. This is a perfectly fair thing to say. When Jesus says it, it doesn't sound bossy at all. Because Jesus is God, the God who made us and this world, so he has every right to give us instructions of how to live in it. God wants this world to be good and fair and loving. That's the kind of place he wants it to be. And he wants us to be like him in the way that we treat each other. Doing what he commands will help us do that. Now we need to make sure we get this the right way round. Jesus isn't saying that we will become his friends when we do what he commands. It's not what he's saying. The Bible talks a lot about God's gift of love and friendship being based on grace. That means we don't do anything to earn it or deserve it. It's free, a free gift. But when we are his friends, we should want to live in a way that pleases him. And we show that we're his friends by doing what he commands. Does that make sense? If someone you know said that they were your friend, but then you heard them laughing about you to someone else, or they never wanted to talk to you or spend time with you, you would have every reason to think that they weren't really your friend at all, wouldn't you? Jesus is just saying, I will know that you're my friend and I'll know how strong and deep and real your friendship is if you behave in a certain way, if you do what I command. And what does Jesus command? This is my command, he says, love each other as I have loved you. So we show that we're friends with Jesus by the way that we're friends with each other. And the example of loving friendship that we're meant to follow is the love that Jesus has shown to us. This is a high standard because the love that Jesus has for us is a sacrificial love. That means he's given things up for us. Jesus had already given up so much just by coming to earth. Uh, last week we were thinking about our future heavenly home. After the service, one of our church families was chatting about what it might be like. They decided it's a beautiful place where everyone is kind. Jesus left that beautiful place of kindness and love to come to earth, which has some beautiful things, but isn't always beautiful. And it has people who are kind and loving sometimes, but not always, as well as people who can be downright horrible and nasty. His home with his father in heaven was a huge thing to give up, but there's more. While he was talking to his disciples, Jesus gave them a really big hint of what he was about to do for them and for us when he told them that the greatest love anyone can show is to die for their friends. And that's what he was going to do. Just a few hours after this conversation, he was going to be arrested, sentenced to die, and then executed, killed on a cross, all because he loved us. When he died on the cross, he took the punishment for the things we've done that stop us being friends with a holy, perfect God. So now when we trust in him, we can become his friends. We had a wow moment earlier when I talked about Jesus, the son of God, saying that we can be his friends. Now we've got another wow moment when we think about what that friendship cost him what he was prepared to do 
to show his love for us and to make it possible for us to be friends with God. This is the greatest act of love ever. And this is the kind of love we're meant to show our friends. This kind of love is costly. It costs Jesus his life. What we might have to give up is much less than that, but it still asks something of us. Our time, sharing or giving away things that we own, doing things that we might not want to do. We can tell people we love them, but do we show it in our actions? Loving like Jesus loves means thinking of others, and that isn't always easy. But Jesus says that when we know that we're loved by him, when we love him in return, and we love others the way that he loves us, our lives will be full of joy. We may have to give things up to be this kind of friend, but we get something back from it. It will fill us with joy. So being a friend of Jesus means being a friend who loves people the way Jesus loves us. Jesus says that when we love him and love others, our lives will be full of joy. But that kind of love also brings joy to others. Tom's going to have a chat with Chris now about how she has felt when friends have shown their love for her. So I'll hand over to Tom and Chris. So Chris, we've been talking about people showing us kindness. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any examples in your own life? Gosh, yes, I can. And actually, I found it I found it a bit overwhelming when I was um, asked to do this, because once you start to think about the examples, they just it's like the warp and weft. There's so many. And I think what struck me as I've been thinking about it, it's not just um, it's all sorts of different types of things. So obviously, at times, there have been some very big things that people have done for us or gifts that people have given us. And sometimes we've, we've been given some quite large gifts when we haven't even known who, who's given it to us. Um, and that can be quite that can be quite overwhelming. You know, those have happened. But it's also just the day in, day out, smaller things, acts of love and gifts of love that people give you. You know, when someone, when you're not feeling very well and somebody does your shopping for you or somebody, I've had friends who've come and done the cleaning for me when, I haven't been very well and the children were little or then it's even even smaller than that when you know when someone just notices that you're not having a good day and puts their hand on your arm and or gives you a smile and you feel you feel heard and noticed and cared for and loved um so it's difficult to come up with any particular specific example because to be honest there are so many you know, I, I even think that when someone, you know, someone gives you a phone call to tell you mm. just to say hello or a birthday card, remembers your birthday, or even when someone remembers that something's happening for one of your family or something else, it can be all sorts of different kinds mm. of things. So it's, a, you know, it's a huge answer, really. Mm. I'd be here all day if I started lifting things off. Um, and when someone does sh show an act of kindness, how does it feel? Uh, um... It's quite a difficult question to answer because it's happy doesn't quite do it. Um, and I was trying to think about how, how I could describe how it makes me feel. And I, I think the word I come up with is a deep sense of joy. Um, it's that feeling of being noticed and cared for. And sometimes it's being listened to or just the fact that somebody on an emotional level cares for you makes you feel it's 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 wonderful it's a feeling you can't and it doesn't have to be just the big things the little things as well can produce that same sense of of feeling cared for and and that in turn i have to say makes me just feel overwhelmingly thankful to the lord because it's through you know you feel his care through the care of the people who care for you 
in all these different ways and it's just wonderful. That's lovely. So. Thank you. Thank you to Angeline, Tom and Chris for that talk and Sofa interview. We're now going to sing our next song and after that, Jess, Steph, Rich and Glenda are going to bring us our prayers. So now let's sing together, God forgave my sin. At this time, the old hymn comes into my head, What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A friend is someone who is loyal, always there, can be called upon day and night, supportive, non-judgmental and a great listener. Jesus is all of these things and he even laid down his life for us. The love of a friend means so much. God's love is unconditional. Thank you, Lord, that I may call you my friend. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who have sacrificed many things. Those who, because of the key role they have, through love have kept away from their families to protect them. Daughters and sons from parents and parents from their children. We thank you, Lord, for all those that saw the need for their care was so strong, particularly within care homes, that the dedicated staff moved in for the duration of the lockdown. Such sacrifice and love has been shown to try and protect loved ones and use the gifts and skills people have to meet the needs of the country, caring for others and saving lives. Bless them and their families and friends. Help them to know that they are never alone, that you are always with them and that their love is felt despite any distance. Amen. God of healing and compassion, we thank you for the establishment of the National Health Service and for the dedication of all who work in it. Give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who care for the sick 
and your wisdom to those engaged in medical research. Strengthen all in their vocation through your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, at this time we lift to you those from all nations and backgrounds who work on the front line in healthcare. Give them skill and wisdom in their work. Be their strength and their shield as they give of themselves in the care of others. Amen. We pray for those we love who we are not able to see at this present time. We may not know what to do to show them we love them, but we can pray. We lift to you, Father, our families and friends, asking that you will guard and protect them during this time of isolation. Give them your strength to face each day, knowing that they are precious in your sight. We ask that their needs will be met according to your love. Loving Lord, thank you for placing friends in my life that make it better. You have given me friends and people I can count on. Help me to be a friend to them. Most of all, thank you for being a friend that is like no other. You are always trusting, truthful, and there when I need you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you have called us to be your friend. Thank you, Jesus that with you as a friend, we are never alone. Help us to live each day in your power. We commit all our prayers to you, Father, in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to say our creed, our statement of faith together. Uh, this is declaring your faith, our faith, in the Jesus that we've heard about today. If this isn't your faith or you are unsure and you do not want to join in, you don't have to, you can listen. But if this is your faith, do join with me now in saying our ATS Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now it's time for our final song and as you sing or sit quietly do let this be a shout of praise to God, the God that we've heard about today. So now we will sing, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart bless your name, bless your name Jesus. <laughs>
we're going to share our final ATS blessing together. There are actions to go along with this blessing and so either do follow along if you know them or watch if you're more comfortable with that. But we do say together. Now, may God's joy be in our hearts, may God's peace be in our world and may God's love be known between us. Amen.